my wearable blanket is going on right after this video. Hey booktube, it's Kim at middle of the book march and this is a delayed my bookish week but here it is <laughs> just uh just the, in the schedule. This is I am filming on New Year's Eve December 31st 2023 probably the only time of the year I will actually know the date for sure. So thought I would tell you about the books I finished last week and some other books I have on the go. Um yeah I mean I don't I don't typically do goals. Um I mean I have some I have some stuff I'm thinking about, but I don't usually have a video announcement of what I'm going to do in the ne in the new year or in the next year in my reading life. But I, you know, there's a couple couple things, a couple buddy reads that I know are coming up that I'm really excited about. There's some other projects that uh, I know are on the horizon, but not by me. And the sun is coming out. My my white cat is like sitting in a beam of sunlight right now. So there's there's sunlight on my glasses. Um, but yeah, and there's a lot of, obviously every year has read readathons for different theme months. So there's certain months that I'm like, I get very excited to take part in. But I don't have any hard and fast goals for myself. The thing that I'm looking forward to next year is to read many more books from my shelf. Well... Yeah, um, without buying a lot of extra books. And I cut way down the last quarter of this year as well, as long as well as getting rid of a lot of books. Even though I had a book haul in December for my post-Christmas book haul. But going forward, I'm going to pull from my shelves and I want to read maybe in a different way. I want to read more of some of my classics, some of my modern classics, some history uh, biographies that I'm really excited about. Um, yeah, I, there's certain, I'm not going to probably read as much nonfiction. Uh, and also because last year I did the booktube prize in nonfiction. So I did read quite a bit. Did I do every round? I think I did three out of the four rounds. I think that's what I did. So I read quite a bit of nonfiction last year and I am, what I'm finding is nonfiction is not my great love. Even though I do want to read some more history, there's a lot up here. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what I'm going with. And I have a couple of long-term projects that I want to do uh, with a couple of bookish friends. So I'm looking forward to all that. But I'm basically going to read what I want. And I am very moody, very, uh, very much a mood reader. I don't make bookish plans. I don't follow anything I barely follow a schedule <laughs> so that's what I'm that's pretty much my my future in 2024 for my my bookish life and my channel so let me get to the books that I finished and the books I wanted to tell you about I finally finished The Code Breaker by Walter Isaacson Jennifer Doudna Gene Editing and the Future of the Human Race I this was slow going to start and I've talked about that. It's nonfiction. I wasn't uh, wasn't picking it up as quickly as some other books. But but once I got past a certain point, I just constantly wanted to pick it up. This was such a great book, such a good story. And Walter Isaacson is an excellent author, journalist, scientist. Uh, he's written a bunch of stuff. Um, a professor of history at Tulane, CEO of the Aspen Institute, sh chair of CNN, and editor of Time. He's got a lot of stuff that he's authored. And his writing is so easy to read. It was so easy to follow. The story of Jennifer Doudna um, is fascinating. She is a brilliant scientist. Uh, I just loved her story. I loved how this science developed in the book. I loved her discoveries. I loved how she developed and mentored people that she surrounded herself with. I loved the developments of her labs and everything that she did. I, I admire her so much. The one thing I had about the book was 
it kind of veered away from her in a lot of the middle. And the book was overall a fairly broad overview of this type of science. So as it still was it still was a great book and I definitely recommend you read it if you're if you like science if you're interested in biology and biochemistry and the biotech industry it would be a great book for you to read um she had so much to do with driving the driving force behind coronavirus um diagnoses detection testing and working on cures. She, the science that she discovered and developed went into curing certain things like sickle cell anemia and so many other diseases and disorders that the science she worked on for so many years will either eradicate or cure or find answers to. I was just so impressed by the story. Um, I also, even even with the writing and some of the, a few things that bothered me just a little bit, um, it's very readable. It's very easy for a lay reader like myself to understand and um, definite, definitely worth your time, especially if you love science. If you love to learn, this is a book, I'm not a scientist and I'm not, science is not, you know, the, my first interest, um, but this was excellent and... I can imagine if you are into science, you would love this book. So yeah, highly recommend it. Great nonfiction, great nonfiction. Okay, the next book I have was a reread for Remember December. And I avoided rereading this book for many years. I've read, I don't remember how long ago I read this book. I'll try to remember and put it in a text in this, on the screen. But this was a reread. And I avoided it because... What I'm always afraid of with rereads is I'm not going to love it like I did before. <laughs> so I avoid it. I, I want to keep those lovely memories in my brain. And I don't want to take the chance that something's going to go wrong on a reread. This book proved me wrong. This was more beautiful the second time. And I do have a small handful of books that I can say that about. This is Evidence of Things Unseen by Marianne Wiggins. Um... I, the reread blew me away. And part of why is I thought I remembered the story, but I did not remember it completely. And it was mostly the setting I forgot about. But once I was in the story, it, I could feel the emotion and the beauty of the language and the beauty of her writing and the love story between Foss and Opal. It's not a romance novel, but their love story is primary throughout the book. But the way Wiggins wrote it, mm, it was just fantastic. <laughs> um, and I think I said maybe in my last video that this book is up there with Now in November. Um, and I read this far earlier than Now in November, but it's almost that the, a similar setting. It's uh, talking about people in a country setting um, in the South, in the Tennessee area, um, in the time period of World War One and immediately after. Foss is a veteran and he comes out of World War One with his best friend Flash. And he's on a trip to see the Perseid meteor shower at Kitty Hawk, I think. And he has vehicle trouble and he pulls over into this person's farm or this person's homestead and bumps into a glass blower who has a glass blowing shop set up in a barn. And this glass blower's daughter is Opal. And it's almost as if he is struck by medi a meteor and he is struck by lightning. And it's basically a love at first sight kind of a scenario. But it's easier to believe in an insta-love uh, storyline. It's not that. And it was just Wiggins' language and her sentence structure and the way she crafted this narrative between these two people is just gorgeous. Um, Foss is a kind of a science lover and a kind of a wannabe professor type of a guy, um, but he's not that. But he has such an enjoyment and admiration for scientific inquiry. And he brings Opal into his life 
and she just fits. They just fit together so well. And we read about their kind of their domestic adventures and the development of their um, scientific inquiries and what Foss encourages Opal to do. We read about their, their families or their lack of families. We read about losses in their lives. We read about the relationship between Foss and Flash and Foss and Opal and Flash. It's very much an inclusive friendship, but there's so many twists and there's so many things that happen and important events. And the end of, there's no way I'm gonna tell you what the end of the book is, but so many events in the beginning of the novel lead directly into the events at the end of the novel. It is just so superbly done by Wiggins. I love this book. I am so glad I read it for the second time. This is a book I will revisit again. It is beautiful. So I highly recommend somebody pick up this novel. If you haven't ever heard of it, please look into it. Um, Marianne Wiggins, by the way, um, was formerly married years ago to Salman Rushdie. So I thought that was um, interesting, uh, interesting information that I found out. And I had known that before picking this back up. And I think the Satanic Verses is um, dedicated to her. So go and check that out. But this is one of the most beautiful books that I know of. Um, if you're interested, please, please find it. That's what I finished last week. I am currently reading The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. I am like almost a fifth of the way through it. I can't stop smiling on every page. I can't stop smiling as I'm reading this book. I read it for the first time in middle school. I've since read it, oh, I, I don't know, five or six times. Uh, seen all the movies, but this was a reread for me because next year I'm going to be diving into the Lord of the Rings trilogy as rereads because I absolutely love Middle Earth. I love the Shire. I love hobbits. I love dwarves and elves and wizards and dragons. and <laughs> I love all of it. And every single page, his writing is captivating and warm and so funny. Um, I just absolutely love this book. And I'm filming on Sunday. I will spend the rest of the day in this world. Uh, Heidi from My Reading Life just finished it. And she and I and Maybe another booktuber or two, we're not sure yet, may join us in reading through the Lord of the Rings trilogy next year. So absolutely love The Hobbit. And probably sometime early this week, uh, I'm going to pick up All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby. This is for the Critical Chicks in Real Life book group. And we are meeting on January 12th, so this will be the next novel I pick up. Um, I have put aside, yet again, the Unabridged Journals of Sylvia Plath. I just... I'm just not picking it up, and I will maybe dip into it here and there, but I'm not going to leave it on my currently reading. And what I have discovered is I've been not DNFing, but I've been removing books willy-nilly from my currently reading. I am much happier when I kind of narrow down the books on my Goodreads list of currently reading, when I concentrate on one book at a time, or possibly two, I will probably be reading these two at the same time or a, in a short overlap. But I'm finding that I'm much happier being bookishly monogamous. And if I have very different books, I can do it more easily. Or if I have books in a different format, if I'm reading a physical book, if I'm reading a Kindle, um, if I'm listening to an audiobook. But I'm finding myself getting very frustrated very quickly when I've got several books going. I also am listening to Jane Eyre. Um, so I will listen to that in the car once I go back to work on Tuesday. Uh, but because I've already read Jane Eyre, I, it, I thought classics and nonfiction work the best for me in, on audio. Classics that I've already read. And this particular audiobook is narrated by Thandiway Newton. Um, Newton? Yeah, I'll double check that. I believe I'm right with her name. She's a fantastic narrator for Jane Eyre. So I'm really looking forward. That's the only reason I'm looking forward to going back to work on Tuesday is to go back into that audiobook. But like I was saying, I'm much happier with narrowing down my reading when I'm reading a couple of books, um, concentrating on one. Only having one on my Goodreads currently reading list, I think it's just 
I'm I'm getting rid of some clutter and clutter can be physical, it can be mental or emotional. So I think that's what I'm doing and it's working well for me. So let me know about any of the books I showed you, if you've read them, if you're interested in them, what you think, what you're doing at the beginning of this year. I hope you all have a happy new year and I will see you in the next video. Bye everybody.